It's Robo, and we're back with another episode of Robo Reviews. And on this episode of Robo Reviews, we're going to take a look at this piece of art. The RWA Agency Arms Urban Combat Pistol. Check it out. So here you have it, my own personal uh, RWA Agency Arms G17 Urban Combat Pistol. Now many of you will recall I had a chance to review this Agency Arms uh, G17 replacement slide kit uh, at SHOT Show 2016 while I was in the Red Wolf Airsoft booth. Now I've gotten my own since then and I'm just going to go through all the things that come in the kit when you purchase it from Red Wolf Airsoft, as well as all the things I did to my Tokyo Marui lower for the G17 uh, to complete the agency arms finishing and look of this entire package. Uh, so let's get into that. So let's start with the kit itself. Uh, and I gotta say, honestly, this is one of the most nice looking pieces of retail packaging uh, I have seen in Airsoft, and I don't say that because I'm affiliated with Red Wolf Airsoft or that I like Agency Arms. This is actually just a really sexy piece of packaging uh, for an Airsoft accessory kit to come in. Uh, so it's a nice little pull-out drawer uh, here uh, to reveal the contents. Now the first thing you'll see when you open this kit is your Agency Arms membership card. This does get you uh, official agent status within the Agency Arms agent program, which is huge in my books because I'm such a huge fan of Agency Arms. Now uh, you'll notice that I've got my Agency Arms agent membership number covered up, uh, and that is because all of these numbers are very unique. I don't want to give that away to the internet spoils of war. And underneath that, uh, you would actually just pull out this placard card to reveal all of the parts laid out all nicely in this sort of velvet inlay. Now obviously all of my parts are out and installed on the gun itself, uh, all except for the battle plate that comes with the slide for the RMR cut, which I'll show you later. Um, but everything comes in here all beautifully laid out and honestly it looked awesome. I mean I'm not really huge on Ooh, packaging, and it's all lovely, and I like to look at it, but I mean, honestly, you're talking about a professional product, this came uh, pretty much first in my list in terms of the most professional uh, products in terms of their packaging and marketing uh, when you first open the box. So bravo, RWA and Red Wolf Airsoft on that one. Uh, you guys really did the agency package, uh, you know, it's justice uh, on that one, so. Again, big thumbs up. So the things you didn't see in that box because they're already installed but come with the kit are the Agency Arms Urban Combat Cut Slide, the Agency Arms Stainless Steel Outer Barrel, uh, the iron sights for the slide, the aluminum magwell adapter, as well as the aluminum Agency Arms Flat Trigger, and the actual blowback unit uh, for the slide itself. Now unfortunately this RMR does not come with the kit. I purchased that separately. This is a GK Tactical uh, RMR reflex sight. Um, but you can get that from Red Wolf as well if you want to complete this look. Usually if you're not going to be using an RMR you can actually install that battle plate that comes with the kit just to uh, make the top of the slide flush back here. So a couple things just to complete my uh, Agency Arms Urban Combat pistol look are uh, my ever faithful Inforce APL or Auto Pistol Light uh, as well as Tokyo Marui custom G17 mags which have this kind of replica base plate extension on there uh, just to kind of give it a nice flushed out look with the magwell adapter. Now this entire kit minus the base gun itself goes for $295 USD on the Red Wolf Airsoft site and yes the kit is now available for purchase on the site, so check that out. It will require that you have a base Tokyo Marui G17 or Wii G17 airsoft pistol uh, to convert over to this, as it does not come with a base gun itself. It's just a slide trigger and magwell kit. So what are the, some of the things I did to complete this agency project and make it either mine or, again, as close to replicating an actual agency arms urban combat pistol? Well, let me get rid of the APL here just to free up some more of the frame details for us to look at. Now, just before we get into this, let's just show everybody that we're, we're playing with safe weapons here. No BBs, no gas, and we are clear down the chamber. 
So just to make sure everybody's playing safe here while we show off the weapon. So we'll talk about the slide first, as well as the upper internals that come with the kit, just so you can kind of get a look at what those look like. I'll also talk about an addition I made to the upper internals there. Uh, and then we'll move down to the Glock frame itself uh, and talk about all the changes and reductions I made to the frame uh, so that it would as closely match what uh, Agency Arms actually does to real uh, Glock modifications. Uh, so with that being said, I'll make this safe and take off the slide. So here's the inside of the slide kit itself, guys. Now what I've had to bring over from my actual Tokyo Marui G17 is the hop-up unit and the inner barrel. Uh, everything else is pretty much supplied in that kit, being the uh, G18, in this case, blowback unit. And the reason why it's G18 is to accommodate the actual RMR cut there. So even though it's a G17, it uses a, a G18 uh, blowback unit, uh, as well as the steel outer barrel, uh, like I mentioned before, and an upgraded spring guide and recoil spring uh, in order to accommodate uh, green gas or propane use over the uh, standard Tokyo Marui duster gas setup. Uh, now, the one addition I've made in here that you'll notice is that I've actually installed a UAC uh, aluminum G18 uh, loading nozzle. Now the reason for that is one, uh, better durability obviously than the standard plastic Tokyo Marui loading nozzle. And two, uh, actually in the future, I'm working on converting this to take CO2 mags uh, instead of propane in some uh, scenarios. Uh, so I wanted it for the durability there. So here's the lower portion of the pistol, which started its life as a stock uh, Tokyo Marui G17 Generation 3 Glock frame, uh, and I've gone ahead and done all of the modifications and reductions uh, to the pistol frame that Agency does on their real pistols. Again, I wanted this to be a complete Agency package. Hey guys, we're back here in the shop that I've got access to late at night, and we're going to start doing some of the physical frame mods uh, to my Tokyo Maru G17 in preparation for it to become an Agency Arms urban combat pistol. I won't lie, it's a lot of work. Uh, first and foremost was the reduction of the pistol grip, which means I removed the textured panels on the sides of the, of the uh, pistol grip itself, as well as the ergonomic sort of thumb rest areas on the top of the pistol grip. I then reduced the back of the pistol grip and removed all the texturing, uh, and I reduced the front of the pistol grip as well as removed the kind of Glock uh, finger grooves, the three finger grooves that come there standard. Now all of the frame cuts on this were done with a Dremel and then finished with some hand sanding. So essentially I went through everything with a, with a Dremel and then finished with very, very high grit sandpaper, uh, wet dry sandpaper, and I largely did wet sanding uh, just to kind of give uh, everything a nice clean finish. So I used 400, 1000, and I believe 2000 grit uh, sandpaper. You can find that in any kind of auto store somewhere. Um, I then did the trigger guard undercut uh, to allow my middle finger of my fire control hand to sit up higher on the pistol grip. Next I did the uh, sled cut, the agency arm sled cut at the front of the trigger guard, which gives you some extra purchase real estate uh, under duress when using the pistol. I also reduced uh, the inside of the trigger guard to give a little bit more room for gloved fingers to fit in there. I then did the accelerator cut at the front of the frame uh, on both sides, which really allows you to really choke up on the front of the frame there with a thumbs forward grip. And then I did the two geometric cuts on the front of the frame that, to match the geometric shaping of the front of the agency slide. Finishing off the frame shaping modifications, I added my own little touch of some mag uh, release uh, scalloping here, just because this is a generation three frame. Uh, generation three frames have a problem with engaging the mag release in a normal uh, sort of normal grip without shifting your grip. So a lot of guys will actually scallop out that area or take out some of the material around the mag release just to make it easier for your thumb to get uh, some good active uh, purchase real estate on it to disengage the mag lock. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done that. And then after all of those frame modifications were done, I went ahead and stippled everything to agency specifications. Now, why you do all these modifications? Well, the reason why Agency Arms does it is it takes a stock weapon uh, and stock package that has known problems and it A, fixes those problems and B, 
changes the idea of it from being something stock or general uh, and, you know, changes the weapon to be a more ergonomically and performance uh, minded uh, tool rather than a stock tool. And when it came to modifying a Tokyo Marui G17 into an urban combat pistol by Agency Arms, I wanted to make sure I did those same modifications. Uh, now, you know, does it help you in airsoft? Yeah, it's more of a looks thing to be honest because we're not controlling an explosion, we're, ex we're controlling compressed gases. Uh, so these things aren't really necessary, but they are really cool. So let's, let's be honest, that's why you do these. It finishes off the agency arms look. Uh, and again, for someone like me who uses Airsoft as a uh, supplemental training tool to real firearms, uh, it keeps real firearms and Airsoft one-to-one -one for me. So. so again, for some of you guys, you know, doing those modifications is purely to complete a package, the agency arms package. For some of you, it's a performance thing. And for others, man, it just looks kind of sexy. So, you know, do what you, do what you will. You don't have to do these things, uh, but these are the things you would have to do to really complete the agency arms look. So what am I my overall thoughts. Well, I'll be honest, I've uh, wanted to go to a Glock platform for a really long time in Airsoft. It's my preferred sidearm in firearms uh, shooting in the firearms world, uh, and I wanted something in Airsoft that would mimic that. So I've obviously been using my Timberwolf, and then I deviated and used a 1911 for a while, which I really found fun. Uh, and I hadn't really got into actually, though, my goal of a G17 or a Glock platform. Uh, and that's because I was waiting to do something unique. I was waiting to do something fun. I mean, I really enjoy, in the firearms world, uh, boutique Glock mods. Uh, I really like the performance-driven aspect, and I didn't want to go the salient arms route uh, because everybody had. And I had been following agency arms for a really long time at that point in time, uh, and, you know, just sort of happened one day. It turned out that Red Wolf was talking with agency, and there was a partnership going to happen, etc., etc., etc. The rest is history. Uh, so when this actually got announced, this project got announced, I was happier than a pig in poop. Uh, to wait for it to drop. So, I mean, honestly, in terms of performance, well, you get Tokyo Marui performance. So, thumbs up. Awesome. You have, in the airsoft world anyways, what be, can be considered one of the best sidearms. Uh, reliability and quality. So, right on. Thumbs up. Does it have its problems? Sure. But every sidearm in airsoft does. This just has less of them, uh, or at least controllable ones anyways. So, what does the agency arms bring to that enjoyment of that performance? Well, I like the fact that it comes pre-cut uh, for an RMR, I wanted to put a red dot on a pistol, so this one comes cut for me already. I do like the tactical sights or suppressor-based sights, so if I swapped out the outer barrel to a threaded one, I could still use a suppressor. Not that I would, but I do like how it allows me to co-witness through uh, this red dot sight. I also do like, nice little feature, is that this rear notch sight is actually reversible, meaning you can have blackout sights, which I do here just by preference. I like white up front to blackout sights so I can focus on that front sight post. Uh, but on the other side, you do actually have the white uh, night sights or enhanced sights if you're that sort of person. Uh, so that was awesome as well. Now, again, like I had mentioned before, the trigger of the agency arms uh, urban combat pistol is uh, adjustable uh, and it's adjustable for take up length. So not only does it have a nice crisp uh, reset, uh, you can actually modify this for take up length. So right now I've got the take up to be about a millimeter or so before I hit the wall and then a nice, nice clean break. Now again, nice clean reset on that. There's the take up if I wanted to take it up, but here's the break point and break reset. So as small as it may seem, this flared magwell also is a dream to use. It makes uh, mag changes that much more smooth. Uh, it just allows for a small margin of error under duress, bringing that mag in as uh, it guides it into the actual magwell itself, uh, basically compared to the standard sort of flat flush uh, bottom of the pistol grip on a G G17 frame. So that's a nice little touch that I like, plus Again, it's sort of that modern look that's going on right now, so it adds to the sexiness of this weapon. So a couple quick notes just to help you out when you're converting. Uh, you're going to need three or four parts from the inside of the loading nozzle that comes standard with your TM uh, G17, and that's just so you can put it in the new blowback unit uh, that comes with the kit, and that is uh, a little valve on the inside, a spring, a little piece of housing, uh, and a little tiny, little tiny, tiny, tiny screw. So just pull those out of your stock TM ones to throw in the new blowback unit. And the other thing too is, the whole, the whole slide might be a little bit stiff at first, and that's mostly just because of all the coatings. So like I've said in my previous reviews of my Timberwolf, and my uh, S&W sidearms, and that is, I always recommend you go inside and polish 
all the inside surfaces, rails, metal that come in contact with other pieces of metal. I actually suggest you mirror finish them so you make them as smooth as a mirror. Uh, and if you do that, that tightness will, will clear right up and you'll be back to being super smooth. So if you do have that issue, if your, your slide's a little, uh, a little tight when you first get it, that will fix your problem for you. And to adjust the trigger, there's actually a little screw on the inside that is accessible when you're actually holding down the trigger when you've got the slide and frame disassembled. So you just kind of screw in or screw out uh, that tiny screw to adjust the take up length in the trigger. So in terms of a holster that I'm pairing this with, well, I'm actually waiting on a custom holster made by uh, my buddy John in Denmark at Predator Gear Incorporated, and he's actually sending me, as we speak, a holster and some mag uh, carriers for this weapon because my current G17 holster was actually made for a Timberwolf, which is more closely related to the actual size of a G17, whereas a Tokyo Marui or Wii G17 is actually a caliber size larger uh, in terms of it, what it's compared to in the real world Glock sizing. So uh, it actually unfortunately doesn't fit. So John's making me a, a holster for this uh, and it's on its way. And for the meantime, I'm using my Warrior Assault Systems uh, Universal Pistol Holster, which I am actually going to be reviewing right after this. So honestly, if you've been looking for a unique uh, G17 or Glock based uh, airsoft sidearm option, uh, I implore you, look into the RWA Agency Arms Urban Combat uh, Pistol Kit. Uh, I mean, on it's it's seriously, it's a it's a pistol that is a literal beauty in the looks department and a beast in the performance department when paired up with a, a TM uh, base G17. And as I said, it's now available on the Red Wolf Airsoft site. Uh, I will put the link in the description below just so you can get to it uh, easily. It retails for $295 USD. And like I said, you get a ton of stuff with that money. The slide, stainless steel barrel, iron sights, trigger, magwell adapter, blowback unit, uh, the whole nine yards. Uh, and I implore you, when you get this, do the frame mods too, I challenge you. Do the frame mods, uh, take your time, be the artisan you are, and uh, complete the agency look. But other than that, even without those, this is a beautiful, beautiful slide, magwell, and trigger conversion kit. So check it out on, on redwolfairsoft.com. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. So there you have it. That pretty much takes care of another episode of Robo Reviews. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Now coming down the pipes next, I still have plenty of gameplay and training footage for you guys to enjoy. So that will be dropping imminently and hot on the heels of that. I still do have my Universal Pistol Holster by Warrior Assault Systems review ready to go for you next, as well as uh, some other items that I'm still working on like my Lalo footwear, my Inforce lighting uh, accessories, and uh, my Tactical Tailor low profile or low visibility uh, MBAF plate carrier. So all of those are being worked on currently and almost ready to go. So just be a little bit more patient. There's tons more content following this. So as always, guys, I do want to take a quick second to thank my two most awesome sponsors being Enola Gay Tactical Smoke Grenades and Red Wolf Airsoft. Now, both of these companies provide me support in such a way, allow me to do more airsoft, but more importantly, bring you guys more gameplay footage, more reviews, and more philosophies to learn from and enjoy. So big thumbs up to both of those companies. Please do take the second to visit both of their websites. They're linked in the description below. Now, whether you did or you didn't like this video, I still want to know about it. Drop me a line in the comment sections below. I do love the feedback and the conversation. And if you could do me a huge solid, that is like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Keeps me happening in this YouTube game. And of course, guys, until next time, keep having fun playing Airsoft, being good community members, and film what you love. Later, guys.